Not even I can say for sure exactly when it will be complete. Not this year, certainly, and probably not in this decade. Now let's look at the digitalization of film distribution, which is supposedly my area of expertise. The home video industry developed in the 1980s based initially on the use of three video cassette standards, VHS, Beta, and V2000, the latter being a proprietary standard developed by Philips. While home video was a success, the conflict between these three formats retained, restrained the total industry's progress in many ways um, as the simultaneous development of the 45 RPM single and the 33 and a third RPM LP record had caused a momentary stumble of sales in the music business in the late 40s. Having triple standards didn't help anyone. But also in the 80s, the music industry was going through the introduction of compact disc, offering a digital standard that was superior and durable enough to convince most music lovers to replace their entire collections of vinyl records with polycarbonate CDs. For most of a decade, as this replacement cycle continued, the, the record industry derived record profits not based particularly on developing new talent, but primarily on reissuing releases of old material on compact disc. I believed that there was the potential to do the same for motion pictures, namely to release our libraries of thousands of films in a new medium and offer with this new medium a new business model. It had to be like the CD, relatively durable, truly mass producible. Remember, video cassettes had to be individually recorded in close to real time, randomly accessible like the CD so no rewinding was necessary, and the video quality and audio quality had to be in conformance not with the current standards of broadcast television, but the newly adopted digital specifications um, created by the Federal Communications Commission and the EU for digital television, both with respect to video quality and audio quality. Most important, was to bring the cost down to being at least half of that which VHS tape was currently um, incurring. Um, by so doing, we would have an opportunity to offer a different business model because of a different cost structure and a higher quality that would motivate people to collect, to buy, give uh, DVDs as a gift rather than simply renting. Again, we face the issue of competing standards, but this time many companies were able to work together, I have to say with some gentle nudging from certain people along with certain government agencies to create the DVD standard. Um, that consensus of a single standard shared by the media industry, the PC industry, and the consumer electronics industry brought DVD to be the first convergence product. product. It played both on a PC and a TV, and it embraced needed copy protection. DVD distribution has been for several years the single largest source of revenues and profits for the major studios. 
On a global basis, it represents a $40 billion market with about 60% of those revenues derived outside the United States. Thanks to getting the entire ecosystem of PC manufacturers, CE companies, motion picture companies, and the replication infrastructure to agree on a single standard, a new model for the distribution of motion pictures and other content was created, and a great deal of financial benefit was derived for, for all in the value chain. But technology moves forward just as, a, just as studio film libraries are depleted and home video libraries in people's residences are filled. DVD sales have hit a global plateau that is simply a function of the saturation of ownership in most industrial countries of households owning DVD players. Um, as this saturation level is reached, viewers might be turning to video on demand, the internet,